Well, howdy. howdy. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. Oh, oh wait, happy Transfiguration. Oh, oh that's right. Hey, how do we, we get started? Uh, well, let's rise and sing 414, Tis Good Lord to Be Here. It's good to see everybody today. Uh, I'm Reverend Jason Marino. For those who are joining us online, uh, look forward to when you can come and join us in person. A uh, couple of quick announcements. Uh, there's a membership assembly meeting today after the second service to confirm the bylaw changes that they have. So just come on in. If you didn't catch them, they'll fill you in on that part of it. Also, we're getting ready for Lent. So this Wednesday, we have Ash Wednesday services. There's 1130 lunch and 1215 worship with communion and ashes here in the sanctuary. If you need to get through uh, your uh, rush hour rush, 4 to 6 p.m., drive through ashes. Come through, get your little mark, and keep on going. But if you can stay, 7 p.m., worship with communion and ashes here in the sanctuary as well. And then after that, we'll be having our midweek Lenten services every Wednesday, 11.30 lunch, 12.15 uh, worship. Uh, that'll be in the fellowship hall during Lent sanctuary here for uh, Ash Wednesday. By the way, Rock Dinner is on February 22nd. If you're interested in signing up for that and you don't have to be retired, you can just pretend like you are, okay? Good. And self-care women's class, Thursday, February 15th at 7 p.m. Talk to Sylvia if you'd like to RSVP. More info is in the bulletin. By the way, I hear there's a cowboy church coming up March 3rd. So yeah, music is going to be a, a, a little bit more in keeping with that. We might get some Southern Baptist tunes or something in there. But more than that is we're going to have uh, lunch and some games and some fun after the second service that day. So please feel free to jump in and join us for that. Hey, let's take a moment. Look at some people around you. Go say hello. Take a second. Good to be able to see everybody joining us uh, for worship today. We're going to be going into this focus on the transfiguration, not only what it means to us, but how it is that it changes the way that we see the glory of God. With that, let us continue in our worship. We're using divine service setting three on page 184. Let us continue in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. 
Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and he who forgave the iniquity of my sin. Let's take a moment with quiet, with our God, who is merciful, so that we take the time to say, God, these are the ways in which I know I have failed, but I also know that there are ways in which I haven't realized. So God, I come to you for mercy and forgiveness. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, as an ordained servant of the word, have the joy of announcing the grace of God unto all of you. In his stead and by our Lord's command, I have the joy of telling you that your sins are hereby forgiven. In the name of our Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the first part of your hymnal, you can go to Psalm 50. We're going to be chanting responsively 1 through 6. So Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. Uh, I'll generally take the odd verses, and you can come back with the even ones. And if you can't sing, ah, just fake it. Oh, good. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes, He does not keep silence. Before Him is a devouring fire, Around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness. For God himself is judge. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Take 
taste away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art Let us pray. O oh God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with, with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 34, beginning at the 29th verse, and can be found on page 75 of your Pew Bible. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand, as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know what the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the people of Israel came near, and he commanded them all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai, and, that, and when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. When Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would remove the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the people of Israel what he was commanded, the people of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face was shining, and Moses would put the veil over his face again until he went in to speak with him. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3 starting at the 12th verse, and can be found on page 965 of your pew Bible. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. Therefore, having this ministry, by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhand ways, we refuse to practice cunning or tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in, in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, for what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord.
Thank you. Please rise. Our gospel reading can be found on page 844 of the Pew Bible. The Holy Gospel, according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Beginning with the second verse. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses. And they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead might mean. And they asked him, Why do the scribes say that first Elijah must come? And he said to them, Elijah does come first to restore all things. And how is it written of the Son of Man that he should suffer many things and be treated with contempt? But I tell you that Elijah has come, and they did to him whatever they pleased, as it is written of him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. We are grounded in Scripture, and through the apostles, we have the teachings that came directly from Jesus that affirmed who God is, being Father, Son, and Spirit. Let us proclaim that with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We join to sing 416, Swiftly Past the Clouds of Glory.
God bless us this morning, not by shining with something that we see with our eyes, but rather because he suffered and put himself on a cross to die for us and to bring us hope and salvation. Amen. Howdy. Howdy. Now, uh, from time to time, I've uh, mentioned that I enjoy going to the Renaissance Festival. Uh, but the very first Renaissance experience that I had was actually back in elementary school. See, we were doing a Renaissance Festival at the school itself, and we were all supposed to dress up as some sort of a Renaissance character. Now, I had absolutely no idea what that was. And in my mind, the only thing that actually made sense was more of like a king's court, in, in a way. So, in preparing for it, it was this idea that was in my head is that I kept making an outfit that wasn't so much what you would see at the Renaissance Festival, but as much as, in my mind, like King Arthur in his court. And of course, what do you have to have at the very end? Put on a crown. Well, I ended up going to this Renaissance Festival there at the school, and everybody else has these like store-bought you know, costumes that you might wear with little fluffy pantaloons or whatever, and you know, all the fun little tops and everything go with it. And there I am, dressed as the king. <laughs> and and this, this thought in my mind of feeling very, very awkward, like, oh no, great, what, am I here trying to command the court and boss everybody around? Which could have actually been fun. But what was interesting to me, though, is that I spent the entire time feeling almost ashamed of what I was wearing. And I kept wanting to take the crown off because the whole time I'm thinking to myself, I don't really deserve to be a king over anybody here. I really have no idea what I'm doing. And this idea of trying to replace true glory with what it is that would actually fade is where I really wanna take much of this direction today as we discuss our readings. See, there have been a lot of things we've been talking about for the last several weeks. First off, realizing that the story of God, it really draws us in because we're meant to listen to God's word, but we're also meant to follow God's word. Because without following God's word, his plan is happening all around us. It's not as easily happening in and through us. But also, even going further and looking at the idea of repentance, changing is not something that we do because we're these great people in and of ourselves, but the change is because we believe that God's path is the right one, and we want to go his way instead of our own. But then also looking at the Christian life itself is that it is meant to be a struggle. It is going to be difficult. It is going to be hard. And it is not always going to be something that's easy to discern and to find. But even more than that, who is it that we listen to? Because the prophets are not just the people who can talk about what you see around you, but also the question of what God is actually doing within them. Are we spending our time trying to follow people that point us in a direction that we want to see? Or are we actually seeing those whom God is working through to create the world that he desires, not just the one that makes us feel safe and comfortable. And finally, is that we are called to serve, is that the idea of being a disciple of God is not just something where we look good and feel good, but is that we are called to serve one another in this. And these, all of these passages have led us to this week the transfiguration of the Christ. Now, to give a little bit of a backstory, we have our Exodus reading. Now, our Exodus reading seems to come out of nowhere. All of a sudden, Moses is bright and shining. I mean, he's like some sort of like a Maybelline commercial or something like maybe he's born with it. No, he's probably just seen the glory of God, which doesn't work quite as well in a commercial, by the way. But there he is shining forth, and what we forget is that this is after he already destroyed the first set of commandments. Why? Because he had come down the mountain 
and seen the people worshiping a golden calf. They had gone so far out of their way, they had melted down all this gold that they had and made themselves a calf in the time that he was up on this mountain. Instead of waiting to hear the words that God himself had to say. And in frustration and disgust, Moses had destroyed that first set of commandments. But the wonderful part is that God, in his mercy, was willing to speak again. And so Moses went back up and got a second set of tablets to hear the commandments of the Lord. But when he comes back down, he had been with God and his presence was just so bright that people started to feel like they were being blinded. Now the thing is, is that this didn't actually stop them from hearing the word of the Lord, but what did they keep wanting? Moses, would you just put on a veil? Just, just, just cover this up, okay? It's just a little bit too much. We're really not up for seeing the glory of God shining in you. So they went out of their way to create this giant golden calf that was not only a huge hassle to make in the first place, but also was derailing them from God, but God's presence is actually there shining forth, and they're like, would you mind covering that up? We really don't want to have to see that. See, that irony is that they were used to having something there that they could see and touch and do whatever practices that they thought that that idol wanted from them, no matter how deplorable they might be. And yet when it came to actually seeing God's true glory, they were like, would you mind putting that away? And I can't help but feel like in many ways, that's oftentimes what we're doing. See, we want things that are going to end up somehow looking beautiful and, and somehow glorious, but we don't want the things that actually cause us discomfort, the things that actually make us look within ourselves and wonder why is it that we're so afraid of what's shining forth and bright and glorious? The things of God that actually make us look within and say, what's going to need to change? Maybe, just maybe, that we're meant to put ourselves out there to help the people who are around us. The thing is, is that we keep substituting God's actual glory, the glory of his servant who came to suffer for us, in place of something that makes us feel comfortable and makes us feel like we've really gotten there as God's people. See, are we looking for environments that challenge us? Are we just looking for environments that seem beautiful and make us feel comfortable? See, when, um, when, when I was uh, younger, um, I, like every other uh, young boy in the 80s, attempted to be a karate kid. Um, that was, uh, there are pictures of it, it's quite humiliating. Um, I don't even know what I was doing. Apparently I was trying to punch in a competition with both hands forward. Apparently I thought it was Superman at that moment in time. It was quite terrible. But you see, the thing is, is that in the midst of those, instead of focusing on the practice and the conditioning and the fact that you need to be able to endure whatever competition you're in, instead of spending the time making sure that I could spar or I knew how to actually land a punch or I actually knew how to kick, is instead in my mind was thinking, okay, in the next two hours, I'm somehow going to know the perfect move and it's, there's going to be some music that's going to well up. And at that moment, I'm going to know how to deploy this perfect move and I'm going to win the fight. It'll be great, right? That's, that's the lesson of Karate Kid, isn't it? It's like you're just going to know at that moment. I know that if I lift one leg up in the air and I'll kick with the other one and come back down. Except, ironically, is that in so doing, that actually <laughs> was an illegal kick to the face. And the movie was trying so hard to give us this fun climax that it ended up showing us something that not only doesn't actually exist, you can't actually get that good at karate in a two-hour movie, but also the fact that that pathway had completely short-circuited the true change that needed to happen within. 
is that instead of actually becoming good at the fight, he managed to get a lucky kick that probably should have been called. But that's oftentimes what we're doing when we look at what we want to see in Jesus, is that we're looking for some special thing that's somehow going to fix everything, instead of asking about the life of discipleship in which we struggle. When we look at the transfiguration, and Jesus is up there, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he starts shining forth. What's fascinating about this is that his shining forth was not the point. The glory that was coming out was not something where, okay, now all you disciples, this is it. Now I need y'all to get with it, and we're going to go ahead and now get started on the whole mission and the whole plan. Okay, look, I'm shining. Let's go. Not at all the point. And Moses and Elijah being there, they were there to minister to Jesus. There was nothing about that event that was meant to change the ministry that they'd already been doing, preaching to people that there was forgiveness of sins, showing mercy to those who were in need, demonstrating to people that it's not our will, but rather God's that we pursue. All of that was still the same. And yet, what do the disciples end up getting focused on? Peter over there is saying, um, what, let's go ahead and set up three little tabernacles, uh, these little tents. You may be wondering why, what was up with that? Well, the Feast of Tabernacles, it was a, it was a festival that was to celebrate their travels through the wilderness and that they had to live in tents. Well, in celebrating that each year, they were also celebrating what they were looking forward to, the future the future coming of God's kingdom. So at that moment in time, if this looks like the glory of God is here, okay, let's go set up the tents. That's what it's for. Because they had absolutely no idea what else to do. But then at that moment, what is God saying? This is my son. Listen to him. Hear him. But that's not the part that we pay attention to oftentimes. We're not paying attention to the part of, let's just pause and just listen to Jesus. But our life of discipleship gets derailed when we don't. You see, I, I would say that I think in many ways, that's part of why we've struggled, I think, as, as Lutherans. But also, I think we've struggled on the whole as the church. In many ways, we know how great things used to be. In our minds, there's some perfect idea of what we thought church was, and if we could just get back to that, then, well, then everybody would know Jesus and everything would be great. But in reality, the exact same thing that was required then is what's required now, is to follow Christ. Nothing's changed. Do what is just, love mercy, and walk humbly before God. Is that your priority today? When we're finishing up with worship today, are we hoping that we heard the song that we were waiting for for today? Are we hoping that maybe, you know, hopefully the wine is the kind that we were looking forward to? If it's too dry, oof, Jesus, don't be British. Now, or rather... Are we here in worship and saying, God, I need to follow you? Today, are you spending time asking what God is going to do in your life this week and beyond? And if you don't know, then are you spending time saying, God, how can I see it? And that's the thing about God's kingdom. You see, it's faith that brings about change through which we struggle and during which we serve. What happened after God spoke? Moses and Elijah were gone. The brightness was done. Does that mean that the glory of God was no longer there? Absolutely not. Because the glory of God was meant to be accomplished on a cross. And that's the piece where we find ourselves. 
would we be willing to see God do his will in this place? See, in many ways, I think we're afraid. I think we're afraid of what it is to really take on discipleship. Why? Because it means you're going to have to actually become somebody different. Or instead of thinking about how everybody's messed up, you're going to have to actually start by asking, what is it about me that maybe needs to change? But more than that, I think you know just how flawed you are, just like I am. And you know that the mission that's out there of reaching everybody else, if we're the ones to go and do it, how badly are we going to mess that up? And yet, that is the glory of God. Because our weakness is the place where God's glory shines brightest. Not because we have it figured out. Not because everything's beautiful and perfect. But because he has called us to be his children and to go out there and to shine that light for everybody else. So for today, for the transfiguration, God's glory shines because of his work in us not because of our efforts and not because we've somehow looked for what was perfect in our eyes, but rather because following Christ is the key. So may today be a reminder that we are called to follow Christ today and always, no matter what else we think we're supposed to look for. Thanks be to God. Please rise. In our prayers, uh, we remember the Mickens family, uh, the Micken family with their uncle Lee, who is currently in the hospital. We also remember uh, Manu and Mustafa uh, with their uh, residency appointment uh, so that they can uh, continue to, to live and to work and to thrive here uh, in this nation. Let us pray. Lord God, as we celebrate the transfiguration, we spend a lot of time focused on the brightness but rather, God, is that it was affirming what it is that you were already doing, that you were bringing hope and forgiveness and restoration to a world that needed it. So, Lord God, let us stop worrying about the mountaintop and bring us back down into the world, not only that we would grow and that we would struggle and change, but also that we would bring that to others as well, because the only hope that we truly have must be rooted in knowing you and following after you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask that you would bless all of those who are struggling with with issues of physical and mental health and um, spiritual and emotional struggles. Lord God, we ask that you would bless uh, Lee, that the struggles of going through hospital care at this time, that you would be with him through this, and that you would bless and comfort him now and always. Lord God, for so many people that struggle with cancer, all the different issues that we keep hearing time and time again. Lord God, not just celebrities that we know that have lost their lives to it, but also those who struggle with it in our world today. Lord God, we also ask that you would bless those who struggle within their families, within their homes. We especially remember all of those single parents who struggle with different issues that they have to face alone. And Lord, we also ask that you would be with those who are overseas in places that we've never seen with our own eyes, but places where we know that there are those who are losing their lives day in and day out, that because of land and property, that people are willing to either lose their lives or take the lives of others. Lord God, we ask that that you would bless people with your word of, of, of hope and of renewal rather than our ideas of religion that end up just expecting to wipe out others and have our own way. And Lord God, we thank you for those in our lives who who show us how life is different and beautiful, including Manu and Mustafa, for their being with our community, both here in Houston and elsewhere in the state. And we ask that, Lord God, if it be your will, that you continue to allow them to live and to thrive in this nation, living your purposes and your will here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for all of those who serve, all of those who love, all of those who bring grace and mercy to this world. 
We remember our military. We remember the doctors. We remember all of those who serve in our community, fire and police. Lord God, for Tyler, Shalid, and Kristen, and all of those that we remember at this time. Lord God, we know that you have given each of us a mission, a direction, and a purpose. Lord God, continue to work your will in our lives, and then through us, work your will in the world around us. And to do so, God, keep us rooted in your word, including how you have taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, for those of you joining us online, um, if you wish to give to the ministry at Christ Memorial Lutheran, uh, you can find uh, the information on our website. Uh, please feel free to jump on there and message us with any questions that you might have. Uh, for those of you uh, joining us here in person, uh, if you are so inclined, we invite you to do so at this time. We also wanted to let you know that the cards in front of you, um, if you have any uh, new information or you're a guest or you have a prayer request, feel free to use those uh, as you need to, to communicate with us and let us know the things that are on your heart at this time. Uh, with this, we bring our offerings unto the Lord. Please rise. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who at his transfiguration revealed his glory to his disciples, that they might be strengthened to proclaim his cross and resurrection. And with all the faithful look forward to the glory of life everlasting. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
this is the time whenever we celebrate the Passover in the way that Jesus instituted it. Not with the lamb that had faded after the time in Egypt, but rather the sacrifice that he was about to go to on the cross. See, the night when our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same way also, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We are in this time of worship, not because we are giving ourselves to God, but rather because he has given himself for us. And as we celebrate this time in communion with Christ, we believe that his forgiveness is ours and that this meal affirms what it is that he has proclaimed and done on the cross for us. For those believing that his salvation on the cross is yours and that his presence is here with us as we receive this meal, affirming that forgiveness for you, you are invited to this table. For the bread, if you need gluten-free, we have that available. For the wine, the clear liquid in the center does not have the alcohol the same the rest does. We all come to this table from different places and with different issues. But this table has been prepared for you. So the peace of the Lord be with you always.
Please rise. Thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his favor upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We join to sing 417, Alleluia, Song of Gladness. <laughs> 